Hello everyone, hope y'all are doing well. This is 3D printed animatronic gimbals, concept and design. And this is this certain things that I do is I'll think of something and kind of get away from one project just to kind of think about certain things and I'll sit here and design. And once again, y'all probably seen this little uh, animatronic wolf I'm working on and, and I've been thinking about putting gimbals on certain projects making you know most of the gimbals I design are small and but uh, you know for larger projects I need to you know think about concepts and things like that and, and this is what I do you know and once again this is a lot of things that I'm thinking about trying to save space but yet keep something small but then you have to calculate torque and then you just look at other servos and just see what I can do. And I've been looking at these, uh, what they call dual axis servos. And they usually use for like little simple robotics and things like that. But, you know, dual servos or dual shaft servos only come in pretty much standard size. But, you know, I'm just looking at trying to get this, this head, neck, you know, gimbal kind of developed for this animatronic you know wolf and I, I still have things to do on this gimbal but this is what I'm trying to develop but yet I'm still got to have clearances and then also uh, to save enough space for future servos in this so-called head of this wolf and these these servos you know have a lot of torque and and that's another thing, you know, you have to make sure that you have enough torque to lift the other servos that are going to be in this head. Then you have the teeth and have all this mechanism that you have to lift. But like, you know, I usually do smaller, you know, gimbals where I don't have enough room to put them inside the head of the animatronic. But, you know, and this is a Grogu I made, you know, a few years back. But, you know, and I was using new joints and but then you, you get to tinkering around and design your own kind of u-joint but it would be off off axis and, and eccentric movement but it would still work but I, you know i tested several of these kind of gimbals and made some they're kind of strange too and but yet i i kept tinkering around with it, trying to get a a better design and then, you know, I test a few things. I would actually print them out and test and see if they work. And they would work. And then some would kind of like, well, uh, this metal version would work, but the plastic version wouldn't work. And then, but I designed several of these gimbals just to get, a, you know, a realistic neck movement and change the position of servos from, you know, a, a rotation from the bottom to the top or trying to, it inside these heads but I was always limited because usually the animatronic was small but making different mechanical movements instead of using a u-joint or universal joint you know I would do certain things like this one here and just trying it out but like this one is doing the movement but it's not doing a rotation and the rotation servo would still be at the bottom but I was just trying to figure out a way to make this to where I could maybe move it closer. But still, you have clearances that you, you have to still calculate to make sure you don't bump into something else that you need that's important. And this thing here was the very first attempt at a Grogu, you know, just trying to see. If, and mainly I designed it to see if I could do it. Now, this was probably 27 2017 or 2018 but just trying to test little little movements you know I was and I believe this was during you know the lockdown and but you know you get to thinking about certain designs and see what you could do but and this week I've been kind of coming out with a different type of design and mainly for larger you know larger animatronics you know the neck trying to see what I could do and and using some of these uh, dual axis or dual shaft servos and just see what I could do and, and try to keep things at a flat plane rotation area. 
but even though I have one servo being a dual axis, the other movement or the other axis movement would need, I could not put a dual axis on that to keep it all flat. So I had to use bearings to imitate the dual axis itself. Now this outside frame of this gimbal here would be connected to the skull. And then the internal would be pretty much rotating for the nod or just whatever you wanted, you know, if you wanted it to tilt or nod. But, and then you had your rotation on the bottom. You know, I don't like looking at other designs. I like making my own designs. And it's just a, a, a personal preference because I like to think of things of like that I made it and but you know it's a part of the the concept and design to see if I can do it and it's just a, a lot of testing and just trying to figure out if I have clearances and once again that's that's one of the main keys and to see how tight I can make this and, and and once again I'm still trying to make it to where it's still small because I mean, this one here is, all of them are standard servos, and I'm still limited on, you know, the size I could, you know, to fit this into an animatronic, it still would be big. But like, the, so I, I wanted to make a smaller version, but it would be using regular uh, micro servos to see if I could reduce the size of this one. But there's not too many I mean, most dual axis or dual shaft servos are standard, and I would probably say 95% of them are standard servos. But micro, they do have some, but their their torque is just so low, it's really not you know feasible to use in anything that I was working on. But so what I was doing is I would take two uh, micro servos with high torque and then I would add bearings to this to fake the so-called you know dual axis but this design and concept you know would would probably work it's just I keep trying to adjust it to make it even smaller but as far as the big one I'm using some of these bearings that are uh, they call them flat pillar blocks from Servo City in this design but for the smaller version, I'm having to insert straight six millimeter uh, bearings into the design of the of the file. But once again, just to keep the design smaller and tighter, I just I just keep tinkering around with it just to see how close I can get. But as far as this whole design is 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 kind of quite simple if you think about it but like <clears throat> right here is a dual axis servo and you can get these from Amazon and these are are not not too expensive and this is a high torque sir uh, dual axis servo right here and now to make it smaller I'm going to go with another servo and it's called a low profile so it's a shorter standard servo and then it's like this one here from high tech and the other thing is, is that I have to make it as far as since it's not dual axis this is where the bearings come in and these bearings here are called flat pillar blocks but you know I just put these on the frame to line up to the same axis of, of the low profile servo and these are available at servo city now as far as other parts is needed is like uh, there's a shaft that's needed to, to go through these uh, bearings but now for the rotation this hub needs to be longer because that way it'll make clear it's underneath here so nothing will bump into you know as far as the bigger frame and that way there's no interference there 
and then you would have like this rotation here would be needing a, a rotational like this servo block from Servo City also. And for the smaller one, I'm using two servos, which are very high torque, and these are the D69s from Servo City, and they're made by high tech, and these are really high torque servos. But for me to mimic them as being like dual axis, I'm embedding, uh, inserting the, the bearings into the, the servo sockets. And I believe it's my eight, I believe it's eight or seven or eight bearings, which are uh, six millimeter holes. And you have to also have, once again, the shaft that goes through this to make the axis so it can rotate. But I still ain't worked out the length of, of these axes that would go in there. But they would be followed with, a, with you know, a couple of washers and a flathead screw and then a nut. But then you have to calculate the spaces for all of that. But I hope you all have enjoyed this. But once again, thanks for all the subscribers and the comments. And we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So thanks a lot, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Later.